Good evening and welcome to the Lockdown Show. Thank you for watching. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome. For those of you who have been watching every week, thank you so much for all your love and support. You guys are absolutely amazing. I must say it's been a wonderful experience hosting the Lockdown Show and uh, comedy in general has been amazing to me. It's given me so many surprises. I, I never stop being surprised by comedy. Like for example, I never ever thought I'd one day be performing in pajama pants, but yeah, this is what has come down to. <laughs> and I'm fine with it. I love, I love pajama. Let me tell you, every day during lockdown, pajama, pajama, pajama. Even after this is over, one way you're gonna check me moving in pajamas. The uniform dress code for who? It's a new world, it's a new world. A big thank you to everyone who's contributed during the course of the lockdown show. And a special thank you to tonight's corporate contributors, to Jezreel Craig Holdings, to GeForce Tires, to Simply Laser Hair Removal and Aesthetic Clinic, and last but not least, to Trends by Shanaz. Also, a big thank you to everyone who's donated to our artists during the course of the lockdown show. We really appreciate every penny that you guys have sent our way. And if you're watching this tonight, please consider making a contribution to support our artists. It really is tough times. I won't lie to you, it is. It is very, very tough times right now. Uh, in fact, I'm this close. I'm this close to selling pictures of my boobs to guys from India on the internet. Just this close. What a big week it's been for South Africa. President Ramaphosa addressed us twice in one week. Now, when they start making those announcements uh, that he wants to talk to us, everyone is running around very anxious, you know, because like the principal calling you to his office, you know, you don't know what he's going to say, what he's going to do, what you did. And because he's the principal, he's the principal. And, uh, you know, except at this school, if a few O's F up, everyone gets detention, everyone. One of the good things that came out of this week, Cyril came up with 500 billion rand relief for us. 500 billion. You know, I don't even know how many zeros that is. And people were like, what? Everyone was surprised. Where did this uncle find 500 billion? Because you know what? This whole, it's like almost like he, like he pulled out the country's mattress. Let me tell you, 500 billion. Because... We are always told that this country is broke, no money, no money. Then it's 500 billion. It's almost as if South Africa is like that Indian businessman. Whenever you ask him, you know, like, uh, hey, how's business? Like, hey, things are bad, hey, things are bad, things are bad. Especially when his staff is asking for, hey, hey things are very bad, things are very bad. But when the new shape Mercedes comes out, hey, pull a marcha out the mattress and get that thing. I just hope that our politicians don't buy Mercedes with this 500 billion. 500 billion. But nobody knows how to get hold of this 500 billion. Nobody knows. And this president, he pulled this thing out. 500 billion. In fact, his name should be Cyril Ramabillions. Cyril Ramabillions is his new name. But nobody knows how to get access to that money. You know, out of thought, the easiest thing would have been 500 billion divided by 58 million South Africans. That's like what? 8,600 rand. Let's just deposit 8,600 rand in your account, sorted. Give everyone, the, even 8,5, they can keep the change. Eight, put 8,5 in my account, I'm happy, I'm sorted. I don't want to fill out forms and everything, man. Another thing that started this week was a door-to-door or area-to-area testing for COVID-19. The Department of Health sent us people out. They started testing people in the areas and uh, they started mobile testing places. And also, also they, uh, they started going door-to-door -door in certain places, you know. So they were coming to people's house, knocking on the door, and they asked to test you. And apparently, if they want to test you, you can't say no, you have to get tested. They were trying to like go into all the areas and, and do this testing. And I thought to myself, yo, this is hectic. Huh? Imagine if the Department of Health started testing for STDs like that. <laughs> yo, imagine if they start going door-to-door -door testing people for gonorrhea and chlamydia and everything. Imagine how some of the cheating bullies, those who are cheating on their pros are going to panic. Now you can't even say no, they come and test you for, in front of your fro and your light is everything, your fro standing, yeah, yeah, test him, test him. Every night he goes, he says he's playing Tani, every night, test him, test him. <laughs> Meantime, this is shitting himself, he's like, hey, take me to jail, take me to jail rather, take me to jail. So apparently there's another conspiracy theory, right? They say that when they issue the uh, vaccine, the COVID-19 vaccine, in that vaccine, whoever makes this thing is going to have some nanotech tracer thing that's going to go in your blood and they can be able to track you and monitor you. I don't know if you've read this before, right? To be honest, I don't care what they put in that vaccine as long as it works, right? At this point, I just want things to go back to normal. Please, you know, you want to trace me with the vaccine, whatever, do whatever, put the microchip in. I don't care, just do it. You want to monitor me? Just monitor me. Carry on, just let me carry on, go my own separate way here, right? I got nothing to hide. Well, yeah, let them monitor me. I got nothing to hide, except maybe my internet browser history. But other than that, I got nothing to hide. Also this week, they announced a ban on the sale of hot foods. That's right. You can't get a chow from any shop, a cooked chow. You can't. 
even garage pies are banned. Now for me, I took that personally, right? Because what did garage pies have to do with the situation? They, they banned garage pies. That was my last symbol of hope. The fact that I could get a garage pie still. Now I can't get a garage pie. Where did the World Health Organization say that a garage pie puts me more at risk of Corona? Where did it say that? In fact, the garage pie could probably help us defeat Corona. That thing is so unhealthy and toxic. Corona doesn't stand a chance against one week old garage pie in your system. Bring back the garage pies, man, please. So apparently a garage pie is the equivalent of eight slices of bread, which makes it very, very unhealthy, right? But have you noticed how bread has made a bit of a comeback recently? Like bread was on a back foot, you know? And no one was eating bread. It was unhealthy. Everyone wanted to be healthy. Even like kale and cauliflower was like, hey, winning. Kale and cauliflower was on the up. But then lockdown came and like everyone threw their diets out the window. It was like bread is back. Bread is back in a big, big way. No one misses kale and cauliflower. Nobody, nobody. Do you hear anybody saying, oh my God, hey, straight after lockdown, hey, I can't wait for a kale smoothie. Or I can't wait to have some kale. Nobody's saying that. Nobody cares about kale anymore. Huh? Nobody's chowing kale, nobody. I, I used to actually know a cherry named kale also. Nobody used to chow her even, nobody. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce your first act for this week's lockdown show. It's his first time on the lockdown show. He's a very funny guy from Durban, KwaZulu-Natal. Please welcome Mangaliso. Hey everybody, it's your boy Mangaliso Mshonga, the one and only, the famous, the phenomenal, the amazing Mangaliso Mshonga. I just want to share a few thoughts with you guys, uh, but I'm, I'm going to start off on a sad note. Um, something terrible happened to me uh, yesterday. Um, so uh, yesterday... Uh, yesterday I lost my dad. Um, I lost my dad yesterday. No, he's not dead, guys. He, he's lost. Uh, we don't know where he is. Uh, last time we checked, you know, he was at the mall, but then he disappeared on us. We still can't find him. So uh, he's lost in that way. So uh, some of you were crying. Nah, uh, he's not lost like that. <laughs> he's still much alive, bro. Now, here's the thing, man. I, I'm a dad as well. So, you know, so I understand certain things because I didn't grow up with my dad. So I understand certain things that, that are happening, you know, as a father, you know. Uh, like, for example, I'm going to give, give you guys an example. Nowadays, we can't tell our kids certain things because we're scared of what they're going to think. Here's an example, right? I was chilling with my son, right? <laughs> I leave and go to my room. My son is watching TV. Out of nowhere, my son says, Dad, Dad, Michael Jackson is on TV. I'm like, wow, I'm a big fan of Michael Jackson. So I run back into the, into, into, into the, um, the TV area, right? So you're watching TV. And then my son says, Dad... So why is Michael Jackson wearing a dress? Now, guys, I didn't know what to say. I, I tried to explain to him the best as I could. I said, uh, uh, son, the reason why Michael Jackson is wearing a dress is because... Um, um, okay, um, son, that's not Michael Jackson. That's Kanye Mbao. But, but I understand your confusion because sometimes it also takes me a second to figure out whether it's Kanye Mbao or Michael Jackson. But then, you know, I heard when she said she was married to Amanda, I was like, no, Michael Jackson was never married to Amanda. So that's how I know, right? And you know what the thing is? I think the biggest thing that is happening in South Africa or in the entire world is this thing of facial reconstruction. I think it is nonsense, right? I'm going to give you guys an example. There's a woman, I'm not going to tell you her race, I'm just going to tell you the story. You're going to figure out what race she is. All right. So this woman spent eight million to get facial reconstruction so she could look like a lion. The reason is her husband has a fascination of lions. So she decided to change her face to look exactly like a lion. You already know she's not black. I'm not going to say what race she is, but I think you know already, right? Now, here's the thing. I would date a woman who, who looks like a lion. I would do it. But I can't because I'm black. I would love to. I can't because I'm black. It's not, it's not the fact that I'm black. It's because I have black friends, right? <laughs> Listen, you cannot show up to your black friends with a woman that looks like a lion. Listen to me, man. It will be the worst mistake you've ever made. I can imagine my, my friends, as soon as, as soon as she shows up, I'm like, uh, guys, uh, this is Amanda. My friends will be like, that's Amanda? Okay, all right. 
They'll be like, where did you guys meet? Uh, Kruger National Park? No. Why, why would we meet at Kruger National Park? No. Like, how obvious? How, dude, like, you met at Kruger National No, we, no, we didn't. We didn't. Like, and you know they're going to give her a nickname, right? <laughs> Next time she's not there and I show up, they'll be like, so where's Mufasa? I'm like, Mufasa? What the f*** is Mufasa, bro? Her name is Amanda. What are we talking? Now, the, the funny thing is, I know who Mufasa is. I, I, I know who, who Mufasa is, but now I don't want to admit and I don't want to laugh. So I'll be like, I don't know what you guys are talking about, right? And, I, and, I'm, and, and can you imagine going even further, right? We go to, uh, maybe I love her so much, I want to marry her, right? <laughs> and you know the Lobola negotiations, there are those songs, those traditional songs that, 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 that black people sing. I, I can imagine the songs that we sing at, at, at our traditional wedding. You know, songs like, <laughs> songs like, I am Bobe, I am Bobe, I am Bobe, I am Bobe. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lions. I'll be like, guys, please, stop doing this. I don't like what you guys are doing. You're hurting her feelings, right? And, <laughs> and I can imagine the wedding, the actual wedding now, right? <laughs> I walk in, I'll be waiting there for my wife. I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait. This is the best day of my life. And I'm waiting there. And out of nowhere, I hear this. Everyone says, stand up. The wife, the, the bride is about to come in, right? <laughs> and then I'm standing there. I'm waiting for the music. And my black friends, I know for a fact, will play the Lion King theme song. Out of nowhere, all I hear is, I'm like, holy shit, these bastards. What are you guys? I'm like, ah, oh, bride, you guys have been amazing. My name is Mangadi Somshong. I love you guys so much. Peace. Thank you very much. That was absolutely amazing. A big thank you to one of our contributors tonight to GeForce Tires. Right now you can benefit from their lockdown price lock. Uh, that means that you can pre-order your tires or wheels during the lockdown and beat the price increase that's coming soon. So you pay old prices if you order during the lockdown. And once the lockdown is done, you can go through to them and they will do fitment and balancing for you. So you get old prices during the lockdown. So take advantage of that from GeForce Tires. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome our next comedian, also making his first appearance on the lockdown show. He's our youngest comedian that we've ever had on the lockdown show. He's just 11 years old and what a talent he is already. Please welcome to the lockdown show, Shikim Pele. <laughs> My name is Shikempele. You know, after this lockdown, I need a five-day holiday. But you know, my granny keeps on waking us at seven o'clock in the morning. For what and for who? Then my mother wants to watch the cooking channel. First, she must learn to cut her onion small. I'm in grade six this year, and we started to learn about our bodies. My teacher didn't explain. Menstruation is only for girls. I couldn't sleep for two days. So I asked my mother if that's what's going to happen. She says, yeah, it happens to boys who don't listen to their mothers. I don't know why I didn't just Google in the first place. And then there's the girls. There's this one girl in my class who irritates me so much. Every time my teacher asks me a question, she answers. And when she can't get hold of me, she messages my mother. My mother said that girls shame me for marriage. Then there's a 13 year old girl in my school who likes me. I'm dealing with cougars here. And my school recently had our sports day. They want us to run 800 meters for a donut and cold drink. That's child labor. I'd rather be making Nike shoes in a Chinese sweatshop. My mom is still mad at me. I don't know who my father is and she doesn't speak much about him. So when my teachers asked me why my father doesn't attend school functions, I said, I don't think my mother knows who my father is. Huh? I'm in karate classes and I recently received my kids in colors. So my mother found out what I told my teachers because they were looking at her funny. So then a few minutes later, she's shouting at me with a finger in my face. So I blocked her. Now she's phoning the whole family saying I'm trying to kill her. And as for my uncle, every time he gets drunk, he wants to give me career advice. I'm only 11 years old. He's unemployed. If anything, he must give himself career advice. And you know my granny, she irritates me because a few minutes, she'll say, I'm so fat. Then another few minutes later, she'll say, Oh, baby, I made Google, let's go eat, go, go, go. You know, I was feeling hungry, so I asked my mother to make me something to eat. 30 minutes later, you know what she's doing? She's busy watching Glow TV with my granny. So I swear, one of these days, I'm gonna go on my mother's phone, block my granny on WhatsApp, 
So when they start fighting, I'll have some Indian entertainment too. But Lotipi doesn't make any sense because Rakesh's wife can be falling from a 20-story building in India and Rakesh can be in Dubai. Rakesh can take a flight to India and catch his wife before she falls and hits the ground. Why? India got no gravity? And Glow TV also teaches you to be humble. Why? Because Rithik Roshan was born with two thumbs up. His wife still left him. Everything is changing. I'm all in for the future. Because when I grow up, I'm the creative dating app where I'm the only man on it. And, you know, if you do eventually create flying cars, imagine you just walking, minding your own business. Poof! A Ford Ranger falls in your head. Why? Because the driver could only afford 50 Rand petrol. Bye! Amazing job, young man. Wow, that light is funny. <laughs> All right, a big thank you to uh, one of our contributors tonight. Trends by Shanaz, stockers of exclusive homeware. You can follow them right now on Instagram and you can get a look at their amazing, amazing products. Available right now for um, order during lockdown. You can order now on WhatsApp or online. And uh, deliveries are going to take place, obviously, after lockdown to your door, delivers to your door, and uh, all the couriers are insured as well. We're all going to have a great time after lockdown. We're going to have uh, jaws at home, dinner parties. We're going to celebrate big time. And uh, I'm sure you're going to have some, uh, some of you going to have functions. You can check out some of the uh, amazing homeware items that you can actually get from uh, them. That is Trends by Shanaz. Moving right along, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome your next act onto the Lockdown Show, our first Cape Tonian comedian uh, making an appearance on the show. Please welcome Mario. <laughs> What's happening, everybody? So, yeah, um, don't judge me because I'm sitting in my car, right? I'm I'm busy with something. You know, people are so serious about this whole lockdown thing, right? Like, my neighborhood watch group is madness. You know, like madness since lockdown. Um, and it's because, you know, the people that make these groups, these ones that speak to their uncles, sisters, cousins, brothers, friends, neighbor that works at the SAPS or the health department, these people, madness in the WhatsApp group, right? Like now I'm sitting in my car because I just want to get the WhatsApp group. Like, where is he going? Why are you in your cab now? Why are you sitting in your car? Um, we must stay here. Don't let us come there. Um, we'll use force and all these things. And I had to say, um, Valencia, please relax yourself, right? Don't tell me about this, that and the other. Next thing she's telling me about, no one is allowed to go anywhere. Last warning, no one is leaving, no one's going anywhere. So what did I do? I left the WhatsApp group. Two minutes later, here's Valencia, I'm back in the group. Valencia reckons I can't leave the group until the 1st of May. And how lucky it must be to be in essential services because I wanted to be a policeman. Have you all ever been so unemployed, so broke, so desperate, so hopeless that if you want to be a cop, you decide now. I filled out the forms, everything, everything, went for the tests, IQ test, what test, physical test. The yellow student lines, everything. Comes here to the final interview. Guess who's interviewing? The same cop that arrested me a couple of times before that. Only on that day does this man tell me that you need a clean record to be a cop in South Africa. If people told me that I would have not done the 10K run and all these tests and all this, they should just I thought you just, they forgive you and you know, you changed your life and you can be a police officer now. That's what I thought. Plus to, um, yo, imagine now, if, guys, imagine 
since this corona started right the numbers have you guys checked the num the sheer numbers the just the digits involved can you guys imagine if jacob was still in charge <laughs> can you imagine if jacob just the numbers like the numbers of this thing imagine just reporting if he was if he was reporting the numbers like guys jacob is got problems with from 10 il 10 20 like double to hundreds then it becomes a problem 500 billion 500 billion can you guys imagine how the speech would have been if jacob had to break it up like think about it 500 billion can you even say 500 billion 577 million <laughs> something like that imagine yeah and this corona tour eh? making people do mad 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 things like mad things like really guys come on if you know someone losing their mind <laughs> just giggle because <laughs> really i mean yo just even social media guys come on social media the whatsapp messages the groups some of my friends are now brew masters never made mkomboti or mampur in your life but you're brewing hunters dry boy hunters dry I, can't, I don't know what's funnier is that if you believe that this thing actually makes you tipsy or I don't know. Guys need to Google placebo. Google placebo. Like guys, just listen to this, right? I go to the shop yesterday. Now, you know everyone in the shop, everyone in your neighborhood, there's the old that hangs around the shop. We've got him. His name is Apples, right? Go to the shop. Apples is at the shop. Can apples or go in, come out, apples us, Mario, here 150. Yeah. I'm like, okay, not bad. Apples usually ask for two, two rand, five rand, you know, asking for a 150. I mean, even apples understands, even apples understands the, this virus is serious. I mean, even he needs to ask for less. So I took out the uh, 150, 150, gave it to Apples. Um, Apples looked at me and said, Mario, I'm going 150. A 150 rand, my bro. Give me so long the geld. I'm going to give you the geld as I'm going to 350 rand, what Cyril has given us. Also, you know, People are not clued up. Um, not everyone's educated about this um, corona thing, especially on the Cape Flats, guys. I mean, um, for those of you that that like know me, I've got a I've got a friend. His name is Copper. Um, Copper and I met when I just moved to Cape Town. Um, Copper's he's one of these very gangster type guys. Um, I organized Copper a phone when I first moved here. I organized him a phone, um, but just we still keep in touch um he lives in bonteville we met there um we still keep in touch um because i organized him a phone so i have him on whatsapp and you know we send these voice notes and like copper i don't think he quite understands like he sent me this voice note and like, copper has things are right there and he was like ah where makes my bro uh yeah my bro is net you go work on the 5G, 5G, 5G. The means only 5Gs in bring, my bro. 5Gs in bring. I weet nie, dis ook om die mense in stier, my bro. In stier. Want hulle is bang. Die mense moet nou nie die 5Gs sien nie. Hulle moet nou nie die 5Gs sien nie. En, when I'm, you know, we're sending back and forth, then I'm like, okay, okay, I need to, you know, Copa is this 5G thing, yeah. And then Copa is one of those guys, he just keeps talking. And before I could send back, I get the next voice note. And then Copa's like, yeah, my bro, I don't know how many people are so much. They come and give 5 grams for me. I will give 5 grams in the smoke. Mak, mak. And 
you see why I'm saying um, we need to educate the people. We need to educate the people. Yeah. Anyway, my name is Mario. I don't even know how this went because, yeah, this is what we're doing. Um, have a good day. Stay at home. Play Bear Laser. Peace. Thank you very much. That was absolutely amazing. A big thank you to Jezreel Craig Holdings for supporting the show tonight. Jezreel Craig Holdings are an established business solution specializing in the healthcare and the medical sectors. They're also recruiters in medical and other fields. So moving on with the show, guys, I think if there's anything the situation has taught us is that brown people, brown people, our parents were right. We should have become doctors, all of us, all of us. That way we would have been useful, we would have been essential. Uh, in fact, in, you know, if you have brown parents, they probably disappointed with you all over again for not becoming a doctor. In fact, the other day I was sitting in my room and my father came past and he saw me there. He says, you're at home again today, you're at home again. I'm like, yeah, I can't go anywhere. I, I'm not essential. And he's like, hmm, yeah, I know. And that hurt more than it should have, you know. But I tell you, you know, uh, it's too late for me to go to medical school. It really is too late. Uh, in fact, what I need now, maybe, if I'm going to be unemployed as a comedian, I need a pandemic-proof girlfriend. I need an essential worker girlfriend. That's what I need right now. So if there's any single lady doctors out there, you know what? We can talk. We can talk about this. You can slide into my DMs. We can have a discussion. I might need you right now. I might need you. I'll tell you one thing. I'm sticking to this comedy thing. I'm going to stick to it because I can't afford to fail because that's what... My parents are waiting for, because I didn't choose one of those prescribed careers, you know, uh, you know, accountant or doctor or whatever. I chose this. And let me tell you, if I fail at this, oh, I'll be disowned. And let me tell you, Indian parents know exactly how to not acknowledge you. I'll tell you how they do it. I'll tell you how they do it. People come over to my house and they talk to my father. I ask about the children. They're like, hey, how's the children doing? They're like, no, no, mom is doing very well. It's a doctor there in Amshlanga. And my other son, Ibrahim, is an engineer in Dubai, yeah, making a lot of money, making a lot of money. And like, what about Masood, the comedian? No, he died. Eh? Terrible accident, terrible accident. A lot of parents are very stressed about their kids going back to school. You know, there's two types of stresses. The one stress is that they're going to miss the whole academic year if they don't go back to school. The other one is, if they do go back to school, they might get sick because this thing's still going to be out there, you know. I think your health is the most important thing. The health of your children is the most important thing. So what if the lighty misses a year of school? So what? One year in a child's life is nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. It really is. Why would you risk your child's life? In fact, this whole idea of sending kids to school at a specific time in their lives uh, and starting at a particular day and, uh, you know, everything goes in such a nice... It's a very new modern idea. If you speak to old people, they, old people will tell you stories. Back in the day, they had no idea when the lighty was going to go to school. The lighty didn't even know when he was going to go to school. He was playing, 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 every day playing nothing happening then next thing he's 13 and then they're like well, how would you th then he starts school and he goes from playing to starting school in a blink of an eye or like overnight in fact there were so many lighties the parents couldn't keep up with who needed to go to school and who didn't you know the buddy would come home there's 18 lighties i don't even know the lighties they're like yeah uh, come here lighty what's your name come here what's your name who's who's uh who's child you are who's your, who's your mother sheila oh you want to mine okay uh, how old you are lighty 13. You go to school. You don't go to school. Hey, Sheila, send this lady to school, man. <laughs> so we only make a big deal about this now, but you know what? It really isn't that important. Your kids are out is the most important thing. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome your next act for tonight. Returning to the lockdown show, it's the Dark Knight himself. Please welcome Mr. Logie Naidu. During this lockdown period, COVID-19 has changed our lives. A big shout out to all our nurses, our health workers, our doctors who are in the front line fighting this global pandemic. 
I always looked for the ideal wife. I didn't like sit for receptionist in my days because they always said, two minutes up, two minutes up. I didn't like nurses in those days because they were the ones who said, now please turn over. But I eventually, and I found the right person, a teacher. Teacher is the one, the lady that says, now please let's do this all over again. Now with this COVID-19, everyone is an expert on the matter. Aunties have forgotten their Langada stories and now they're all experts commentating on COVID-19. They have become epidemiologists, they've become virologists, they've become medical practitioners, they've been, become experts and talking on social network over the fence, they talk about this virus that's affecting all of us. Well, just to tell you that the word IO is now part of the official English language. The Queen's English, Oxford University have announced that this word IO, which is an exclamation, as an official word in the dictionary. Now that's wonderful, I think. Now we can all use that word IO in, in our manner of speaking, in public places, at workplace, etc. I'm going to apply in this 2020 for the word to be included now in the English language, the word that is so popular to all of us, but we still don't know the true meaning of it, the word chutia. I think it will be wonderful to have that in the English dictionary and in the English language. But for the Bredos, we'll call it chutia. But for the South Indian, the Porijos, we'll call it chutmari. Well, talking about Chutyas, I think the world's biggest idiot at the moment is the President of the United States of America, Donald Trump, and his handling of this COVID-19. It's unbelievable way, the way he says, we're going to find a cure, we're going to make America great again, and something big is going to happen soon, and people are dying. And I, it's unbelievable, today he talks about disinfecting. He says, use a disinfectant to cure coronavirus. He talked about using UV light, to put it into your body, into your skin or anywhere in your body. I like to say to him, put UV light up your ass, Donald Trump. Maybe it'll help you to think clearly again. Our president, Cyril Ramaphosa, has been so wonderful a world statesman and leader in the way he's handled this virus. Hats off to him, salute our leader. I always said President Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa. He's got some Indian blood in him. His name is Ramaphosa and we salute him. And I'm sure soon Jacob's Coffee will change the name to Cyril's Coffee. See trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue. And clouds of white, the bright blessed day, dark sacred night, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky. Sunsets and stars, people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, How do you do? They really say, I love you. I see babies cry, I see them grow, they learn much more. And I'll never know, and I think 
to myself. What a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself. Wonderful world. Thank you, folks. Stay safe, obey the rules and regulations, and peace to you. A big thank you to one of our contributors tonight, Simply Laser Hair Removal and Aesthetic Clinic. They've been in service for over 14 years and have invested in cutting edge technology and only the latest advancements. They have four qualified therapists offering a wide variety of services and treatments ranging from basic hair removal treatment to advanced skincare plans. Call them today for your next appointment. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome back to the Lockdown Show my good friend, the amazing comedian, and one of your absolute favorites. Please welcome Bash with Tash. Hey guys! Whoop, whoop, whoop! I'm in the house! I'm excited to be in your screens, and I salute all our frontline staff. You're doing a great job. Make sure you guys are at home. Thank Thank you, Masood Boomgaard, for the fantastic introduction. Masood, I commend you and all the artists. You're doing such fancy work when it comes to comedy. Now, talking about fancy work, let me tell you, this lockdown has brought on some fancy shifts. Now, I love like chefs and I love bakers and everything, but what I'm seeing on social media is putting me under pressure. Like, I'm here having snacks like butter bread and samba chips, or I'm having, I'm not even buttering the bread till the very end. I'm checking on social media. People are doing three-tier cakes with fondant and Man United theme, everything for tea time. And I'm shocked the other day I checked Cook Sisters. Now, I love a Cook Sisters. You can see I look like a Cook Sister myself. I love Cook Sisters. I'm used to just the dry Cook Sister. You know what I'm talking about. Just the one with the dry inside and the desiccated coconut on top. I'm checking social media. These people got this thing dipped in syrup and fancy colored coconut. That cook sister looked like it took a drive to Amshlanga and came back. I want to put it as an ornament like the three puppy dogs I got in my cabinet. I don't want to eat that thing. <laughs> One thing my sister-in-law is known for showing off. Eh? Uncle's sister will never leave an opportunity. We know she got pool and she got big yard and she got garden. But every time I put a photo up of me sitting in the couch, I don't have a garden. I'm living in a flat. She go and put the photo with her big, big palm trees in her back, like a backdrop, everything. I don't even have a pool. I don't know what I'm supposed to do to look cool. So what I decided to do is I go in that tub. I have bubble bath. That tub is so small. I don't know if the bubbles are having me or I'm having bubble bath. I come out with a wet look and I put that photo on Insta and I say, it just came out of the pool. So cool. Meantime, not one wave was hit because I am the only tidal wave in this house. Now, as you know, only one person is allowed to go out to buy essential items. And we've nominated my husband in this house to go, right? Because it's just me and him. So I've also decided that I need essential items. Like this month when my debit order goes off, I'm not going to allow everything to go off. Just the essentials. And talking about the essentials, Trekker is one of them. You know why? I'll always keep that debit order running. I'm not advertising for them. Relax because I'll be able to see where this fella is. Because now and again, I send that fella for bread. He's coming back two hours later. And why is his sister putting a status, so happy, love my life? I think that fella is lying and going there. So in future, I will be watching Tracker. If it's bread you're gonna buy, it's bread you're gonna do. Being romantic or even trying during lockdown is difficult. I told y'all, the only flower I see is the ones I bake my roti with. Now, my husband tries his best, but recently he's taken this thing too far. Normally, we won't buy essential oils. We will just rub each other with lotion. That's about as romantic as it goes. He put his foot down last week. He's like, I'm changing all the lotion to sanitizer in this house, and that is what I'll massage you with. I got so excited. This man went to get sanitizer because we ran short. He comes back. He's like, babe, I'm ready to massage you. That fella comes with that 30 ml bottle of sanitizer. Where are you going to put it on my eyelids? Now... I'm sorry to have to say, I love my parents, but their interpretation of the news is really bad. It's like a broken telephone. Like my father is talking about this thing like a little child. He's like, hey, Kerona was born last year. I'm like, uh, Kerona, you're not even saying it properly. He spells it K-R-O-N-A. 
Now he's talking about the child is like six months old now. And uh, she like everybody now. She go by everybody, this Kerona man. I'm going to send her a one-way ticket. I'm sitting here thinking, who is Kerona? Who is Kerona? Only to have to join the dots. Because that is how our parents transfer the news to us. So it's the best they don't transfer anything. Now, I told you before, and I'm going to say it again. My husband and I are big fans of movies. But we start to interpret them a little bit differently. The other day, we watched Taken. And my husband was so panicked, he kept watching me sleep the whole night. So halfway through the night, I'm like, what's wrong with you? You're bad luck thing. Why you keep watching me? He's like, I'm scared. What if they kidnap you? I was finished with laughter because let's be honest. <laughs> you have to be at least under 100 kgs for them to be able to carry you and take you. And let's face it, by the time they lift me, their arteries will get clogged and they'll have hernia. They're not taking me nowhere. Now, let's not ignore the elephant in the room. And I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about social distancing. First of all, I truly believe that everybody should wear a mask. Guys, you're protecting yourself from not only the virus, but for things that have been bothering us for years and years. And that is BB, <clears throat> Bombay Duck Breath. That's the one thing I can feel nauseous, fall down once and not even wake up twice before I can handle that. So let's just give a thumbs up for all the masks right now. So apparently when you come back from essential shopping, you should uh, throw your clothes into the washing or put it into boiling water. Don't put your shoes in the house. And I know all these tips, but then my sister-in-law, she doesn't have much contact with social media. So I phoned her and I told her, listen, yeah, this is what you're gonna do. Take your clothes out, sanitize your hand, take the sanitizer, put it in a syringe, inject your heart. You know why? You got dirt in your heart and I cut the call. A round of applause for our unsung heroes. These are frontline workers. And then the other unsung heroes, beauticians. You know why? Right now, all the wife's upper lip is looking so bad. And let me tell you, to clean that upper lip is so hard. I'd rather sit with three bunches of Murinkire herbs that is easy to clean. Now, for those of you who know me well, you know I suffer from CDAS, can't do anything syndrome. The other day, I told my husband I'm feeling weak. And he laughed. He said, since when can fat people feel weak? I am not talking to that man. Now, they have put a limit on functions. Can you picture how weddings are going to be? This can actually be a blessing in disguise. Because now, you don't have to invite 500 people, of which 400 you don't know, because your mother said you must invite. You can invite the people that you actually know. And for once, you're going to be saving on this function. Let's get real here for two and a half seconds, right? First of all, how will your invites be? You've got to put one on the invite criteria. Send the one from your house that has the best immune system and we will allow you to video call the wedding, right? Because before they used to put two on the invite and people used to just die with that. So let's just see how they're going to act now. Also, spaces are going to be different. So instead of a table of 10, you're probably going to have a round table of five, which means you're going to save because those aunties who come early now cannot steal the souvenirs from right next to them because there's a one meter distance. Brides, you're going to love this and makeup artists. Whenever you get married, you must get that one auntie who will come put her red lips on your face the whole day for the whole video. It'll be there. Now, no kissing, no touching, which means if you don't like your husband's family, this is an advantage because you never wanted them to kiss or touch you in the first place. Put that on your elbow and shake that off. So I didn't know that you can make beer from pineapple. Like, I don't know a lot of things, right? So I didn't know what the hype was about because obviously, you know, my husband's got so little bit of alcohol left, he's gargling the thing and putting back. But more than that, I found a way how to make beer. You see, I take his draft glass, I put iron brew there, it got the frizz, two to, uh, what tablespoons of fine salt, he's never gonna know. He tasted that thing, he got the bitter taste, he's saying, hey, they're true, they right, hey. they right with the symptoms and all of this thing, yeah, because all my taste and all is gone, man. Now, I said this before and I'm saying it again. People doing the egg challenge, you need to actually up your game. The egg challenge, right? Because, I mean, when we became big girls, we drank egg for 14 days. We never took sugar after that and called it a challenge. But that will make exactly a good reason as to why our stomachs look like scrambled eggs now. True, I'm fed up. And as for the men that are going, sunny my face and all itching. As for the men that are going and opening one whole bottle and drinking on social media, can you stop it? You're a bad influence. Plus two... People ask our Indian fellas or whatever the case may be, how 
sure y'all managed to drink that whole thing if they actually did. Remember, our boys can drink anything because every week on a Friday, they mustn't forget their granny gave them castor oil to clean their gut. Now, I'm all for challenges and I'm a go-getter. Now, there's a new challenge. Your husband have to lift the wife up for 30 seconds at least and walk around the house. <laughs> Let's just start off by saying my husband won't even be able to lift me and last two seconds. That fella gets a hernia just from lifting my clothes off the line. That's how heavy my clothes are. Imagine me. So everybody's selling sanitizers and everybody's selling masks. So I told my husband, come, we sell sanitizers, masks, make some money. Things are bad. He told me we'll never succeed in any business because the only thing I can sell in this life is my mouth one way. Now, I'm tired of the complaining about my husband, so I decided while I got the Wi-Fi on, I'd rather just list this fella for sale on Gumtree. Everybody's buying anything and everything. And the advert will be so lovely. Think about it. Good husband for sale. Dirty ways, can't clean, no mind, got good heart. Eating is mandatory, I can't help you there. Loving him at your discretion. Order now, before you make the deposit, I will deliver immediately and strictly no returns. Last line of the advert, order this product in the next hour and receive a 500 ml bottle of sanitizer. Please note that this product comes with his family. However, we can be very discreet to the new owner of this product. For a girl who loves the casinos and the only pot that's closing is the one in a, in a kitchen and the only chip she gets is McCain chips, I'm pretty happy that casinos will have to social distance. I am sick and tired of playing and before I know I got the spins, somebody's granny is standing behind me and saying, so nice you got the spins, you're going to make a lot of money. Eh? Dirty eyes, social distancing, gone with dirty eyes, finish, it's game over. I'm happy about social distancing. I think social distancing is actually going to work out for a couple of people, right? Imagine dating. You're not allowed to hold your boyfriend or whatever side chick's hand and walk. Imagine how amazing this is going to be for other fellas. Because that girl of the other fella is walking miles away from him so you can stay and vice versa. Mothers are so happy right now because their sons are at home and not sitting somewhere in one park or one beachfront. They are so happy because that son's full salary is coming in their hand and they are ready to poison that fella's mind so you don't have to go out with that Katra girl again. People have various things that they want to do when lockdown is lifted. Some want to go to the casino, some want to visit their family, some want to go to a place of worship. Me, I just want to go to my sister's house and bring all my tapway because she's a bad luck and she's probably putting it for me as we speak. My mother-in-law worships the ground I walk on. We have such a good relationship, obviously, because she's hmm, no longer here. She's upstairs. Now, people always say I'm a bad person for talking about her, but not. She's laid for 10 years and I pray for her every single day. Why? Lots of people ask me why. Even my husband said, what you trying to put a show and pray for my mother for she's gone? Well, <laughs> I'm praying so she can come back down and take your four sisters and go with her. Hey, I'm tired of this man show. I find that our people are so afraid to talk about death. Not me, y'all know this. I plan my whole funeral and everything. Actually, I can't wait for that cute stripper fellas to carry my box in eh? and where I can smile and say, I'm gonna catch you. And let somebody bang my box and say, wake up, Tash, wake up. I'm going to wake up and give them one tight one and go back. Now, my husband competes for everything. Me being born Telugu and him Tamil and now me marrying him. Everything becomes a competition. Even when we heard the news, one tiger got uh, COVID-19. This fella said, hey, don't spread that news. Don't spread that. Don't worry, that tiger is strong. You know why? It's a Tamil tiger. Now, a mask seems to be a mandatory item in your closet now, obviously, because you can't leave the house without it. Now, people are making name brand and branded masks. Me too, I want to make some branded masks. I can't wait for it. In fact, if I want to flirt with the young ones, I'll just put on the side of my mask. Don't worry, these cheeks are covered, but go a little bit back, you'll see those cheeks over there. <laughs> Anyway, this is Bash with Tash, guys. It's been an honor to be in your presence. I commend all of our frontline workers and I commend all of the comedians that have come out here and changed your lives. Support the cause and support the comedians. Keep the industry alive. It's been an honor to be in your presence. And I'm going to hand you back over to the amazing, the phenomenal Mr. Masood Bonga. And that is the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching the lockdown show. And thank you to all our corporate contributors, to Jezreel Craig Holdings, to Chens by Shanaz, to GeForce Tires, and last and not least, to Simply Laser Hair Removal and Aesthetic Clinic. We really appreciate your support. Thank you to everyone who has been donating to the lockdown show and helping our artists during these difficult times. If you watched the show tonight, I'm sure you had a great time. Please consider making a contribution to help our artists. Any amount is uh, appreciated, whether it's 50 rand, 100 rand, 20 rand, even 10 rand, whatever you have, 
It really is appreciated and you can donate by uh, EFT to the bank account on your screen or you can do an e-wallet to the number that's on your screen or you can do a quick donation via Quicket. Uh, it takes less than two minutes and um, you'll be done with it. We really do appreciate everything that you guys do for us in keeping the entertainment industry alive and we will continue doing the lockdown show as long as we need to. Thank you so much. Have a blessed evening further. And until next time, good night and God bless.